Hey guys. So let's talk about YouTube Rewind. <laughs> okay, I'm only new to the whole being a creator on YouTube scene, so I don't really think I'm in a position to judge too harshly. But so YouTube Rewind YouTube So YouTube Rewind was posted about a week or so ago now. And it's been getting some pretty mixed results, so I thought, why not add my two cents? Because, you know, everyone clearly wants to know what I have to say. <laughs> but, you know, why not? Hey, let's just have some fun on this channel. So yeah, let's all admit that last year was a bit of a disaster. <laughs> it was so forced and cheesy, and it just didn't have any soul to it. and. It just kind of felt like everyone was forced to be there and it became one of the most disliked videos on YouTube of all time. Record-breaking speeds. In a way it was a marvel. It was impressive of just how hated it was. Personally, I didn't like it much like a lot of you out there, but I didn't hate it. I was like, okay, it's clearly trying to capture some of the glory of previous years. So. For example, 2015 and 16, and 17 to an extent, were definitely the prime of YouTube Rewinds. They were fun, it felt like a big collaboration party, it got a good balance between different kinds of creators, not just the content, and everyone looked like they were having fun and they just went all out. Last year it just kind of felt like when you're trying to teach your parents how to email for the first time, it felt very slow and awkward and like no one really knew what was going on, but you're kind of smiling and nodding like, K-pop! Literally the only good thing I can think about for that rewind was that the animators were finally able to get involved. And, you know, shout out to Jaden Animations for getting the PewDiePie references in there. Good on you, girl. Yeah, then suddenly this one came around and it felt very passive aggressive, where it was like, we made something you didn't like, but here are things you did like, because you know better than us. It felt very passive aggressive on that opening, and I gotta admit, as soon as that writing first showed up, I was like, oh, shots fired. Um, but then it started playing and it started having a bit more of a nostalgic feel where you saw creators that you loved and you saw them in their element where it was clips from their channel which did feel nice but it felt soulless. I think a lot of people have compared it to being one giant mojo video where it was like just lists of top fives which I've done a couple times here so you know. But there was no fun the animators got gypped again, authortubers got gypped again, a lot of gamers got gypped, there was no Markiplier, no Jacksepticeye, no Cranky Games, it was all just, here are the games that you liked, but screw the people who were playing them. You've got favourite makeup artists, why can't you have favourite gamers? Why can't you have favourite authors? Why can't you have favourite animators? It just didn't make sense. It just didn't make sense why you broaden the scale by including amazing things from like different countries and record breaking moments like Mr Beast with the whole with the planting 20 million trees i mean you included some groundbreaking stuff and you branched to all around the world to so many different creators and so many different people and so many brand new categories which was fantastic but why did you jip the people who have brought so many people to the platform? So much content, so much fun, insane, creative ideas. It just kind of felt like you took a good three steps forward by including more people and talking about record-breaking moments and talking about the likes and the numbers. But then you took about 10 spaces backwards because you didn't include the people who had been there for you from the start. And also the people who you started to give attention to, you've suddenly put on the back burner yet again. I know, at the end of the day, there is never going to be the perfect YouTube rewind for everybody. Because 
everyone has a very different experience. Like, for example, I love watching Let's Players, AuthorTubers, and animators on YouTube. I absolutely love it. But then you've got other people out there who, yep, they might like gamers, but then they also watch makeup tutorials. They're more listening to the comedy side of things. Then you've got other people who are strictly there for historical reasons and research. There are many different things that you can do with YouTube Rewinds, and it just feels like so many categories get missed out and shifted around every year. So many big personalities don't get mentioned, and even Tom pointed this out. If you're going to have so many different categories and so many like, oh, here's the best games, here's the best makeup artist, etc., why aren't you having the most watched charity live streams? I mean, so many people out there do charity live streams, do 24 hour streams, do fundraisers, you name it. Why aren't they getting any recognition? Because then you're not only paying homage to the content creator, as well as, you know, YouTube patting their own back for hosting such a thing, but also you're giving a shout out to charities as well. I don't know, at the end of the day, like I said, you're never gonna have a perfect YouTube rewind. I didn't hate this one. I liked it way more than last year's, as in it branched out, it showed a little bit more of the actual channel and not just the person, but then the people make the channel, the people make YouTube, so it's a tricky one. I think the days where you could watch YouTube Rewind with a smile on your face the whole time, you're like, yeah, I know that person, oh my god, that person made it, oh yeah, they're reenacting this meme that happened, oh, they're talking about this issue that happened that year. I think that's gone. I don't think we're ever going to get that back, which sucks. But we can hope. I might be proved wrong next year, you never know. 2020 and all that, let's make it a big one. But yeah, as for this YouTube Rewind, I enjoyed it, I found some bits really great, I liked that they branched out, but I didn't like how it was just list after list after list. It felt like there was just no personality there anymore and you didn't get a feel for the people that have been there since the start and you did not really get a feel of what you were being shown. It was just like, hey, you liked this, this happened, moving on. Okay, yeah, I guess that did happen, and you know, the 20 seconds of it I saw looked pretty cool. I just feel like YouTube itself is cutting itself off from its creators. And it's really showing in the Rewind videos. I don't know, at the end of the day, it was an improvement from last year, but the standards were pretty low. I think if they looked back at like YouTube Rewind 2015-2016 and tried to recapture that fun and that collaboration, the, the collaborating idea, then they might have some, some hope for them, but I don't see it happening. I really think those days are behind us now. It's Everything's too political at the moment to have fun, I guess. So yeah, those are my very small thoughts on YouTube Rewind 2019. It branched out, it covered a lot of issues, it was a bit more fun than last year, but it had no personality, no soul, and so many great people got ignored just because of an algorithm that doesn't make sense anyway. Let's be honest, I'm, I'm very new to YouTube but it is very flawed. But still, we don't know what next year is going to bring. We don't know what's going to happen. It might be amazing next year. It could have really learned, for, learned its lesson. Third time's the charm and all that jazz. Yeah, YouTube 2019. It wasn't the worst. That's all I can say. It was not the worst and it wasn't as cheesy. <laughs> K-pop! So yeah, let's hope that YouTube 2020... 2020, that still sounds so weird to say. But let's hope that YouTube 2020 has a bit more oomph, shall we? <laughs> it's not the worst. I didn't hate it, but there was very little effort in there. Well, what can you do?